Hi, my name is Andrew Rosenberg and I'm here today to do a presentation about impacts of network simplifications um, using the hydroparamodels.jl framework. I did this work with my advisors and some colleagues and it was supported by the FGV and EHGA Research and Development Project and by my scholarship by CAPS Foundation. A little bit about me. I graduated in control engineering uh, from Pukihiu, Brazil. I did a double degree in general engineering at Colle Central de Marseille in France. I have an operation research master's from the Lesco department at Pukihiu. And the work I did, I'm presenting here, I did as a researcher at Laboratory Applied Mathematics Program and Statistics at LUMPS. And I'm current researcher at Invania Labs. Hydropromodels.jl is a Julia Jump package for hydrothermal crown dispatch optimization. It was presented and published in Julia 2019 and you can find the link to the previous presentation and related article at the GitHub page. The three main dependencies of hydropower models are jump.jl, an efficient layer for mathematical optimization uh, modeling, paramodels.jl, which parses uh, network data and creates um, the related optimal powerful problem in jump, and stdp.jl, which handles the solution method for mood state to catch problems. Uh, the work we are going to present here was done on a new branch, which is not yet merged, but will be soon merged. But what's the problem you're trying to solve here? Hydrothermal Economic Dispatch deals with the planning and operation of hydro-dominated electrical systems, such as the Brazilian National Grid. But this is also relevant to the rest of the world, since water is a widely used energy source. The objective of our problem is to coordinate generation, energy distribution, and the hydro storage management to minimize cost of operation in multiple stages. The biggest uncertainty here is hydrology. I gave here a very simple example. Imagine the system operator has to decide whether to use the cheap resource water now or store it for future periods of drought. Uh, in the case that in future periods it rains, so we could have used uh, the incoming water from rains to generate energy. If we have stored energy, uh, it means that we haven't used this cheap resource in the past and we could have but in the case that we use this cheap resource uh, in the current stage and we end up not having rain, we end up having to pay more energy, um, more for the energy in the future stages. Of course, uh, reality is not so simple. It's not about deciding whether to choose to uh, save or not water. It is how much water you save and for multiple different possible scenarios. So because of this interlinkage between stages, related to uh, the reservoirs, which take a long time to fill. This is viewed as a multi-stage stochastic problem, uh, and it's extensively dealt in the literature. As I said, we are planning the operation of our system, which is related to coordinating uh, energy production from multiple resources and taking to where it will be used. The more realistic formulation for this problem is the alternating current optimum power flow, which takes into account the complicated and non-convex energy power flow constraints, making this problem not suitable for the tractable solutions for multi-stage stochastic problems, uh, namely the algorithm STTP. So we have to use network simplifications, uh, which are approximations and relaxations that transform the optimum power flow problem in a convex problem. In the right here, we have a Venn diagram, which, show, which uh, shows the feasible region for the alternating current problem, the AC, which is clearly not convex, and some relaxations of uh, this problem. As you can imagine, the closer the relaxations are to the original AC feasible region, the better, since our solutions will be more consistent with reality. The problem with planning with simplified models and operating on a complicated system is that you end up with what we call a time consistent policy. I gave here an example that everyone will understand. Imagine you're planning the birthday of your daughter and you choose a cake of her favorite princess for her birthday. Uh, but you won't mind the difficulties of making that cake and you end up with something that doesn't look nothing alike with what you have planned. And this has detrimental effects, as you can imagine. In our case, that's the same thing. You plan the usage of your reservoirs, which take a long time to fill, uh, imagine that you will be able to use it in a simplified reality. And this ends up having detrimental effects that were very extensively 
research in the recent literature. The idea here was to create a framework where people could analyze the impacts of uh, time-consistent policies. Here we have a slide from a previous presentation in Julia Kahn, uh, where I present how hydropower models uh, uses its dependencies. PowerModels.jl parses uh, network case data from input files and creates the optimal power flow um, problem in jump from the formulations defined by the user. We add the necessary hydro variables and constraints and pass along this problem to the sttp.jl, which creates the multi-stage stochastic problem and solves this, solve it using the sttp algorithm. But to allow hydropower models to assess time consistency, we need some changes to the framework. Uh, I'm very thankful to Julie and my dependencies, which made code changes and extensions very easy. So the first thing we had to do is add additional entries by the user so he could pass uh, the formulation he wants to the detailed model of reality and the appropriate solver. The second was uh, changing one of the dependencies, stdp.jl, so we could use different problems in training and simulation. The result is a workflow where PAL models now outputs two models, uh, one related to the simplified model and one to the detailed one. We add the necessary constraints, uh, hydro constraints to both of them, and we also pa pass both of them to scdp.jl, which we will use one for the planning and training and one for the uh, simulation of operation. Now let's see a medium-sized case study for this uh, new framework. We here have a 28 bus uh, system and hyperpower models has some visualization functions so we can uh, see the plot of the grid and also an aggregated plot for the inflows of the reservoirs. Hyperpower models gives you an interface to easily implement the described model. Uh, first, you import the necessary packages, hyperpower models and the appropriate solver for your formulations. And then you are able to load the case by passing the respective folder where you have all the input files. The user uses a create param to sort out the parameters of the time consistency study he wants to run. So he defines uh, the number of stages he wants to plan ahead, uh, the number of hours in each stage. But now he passes uh, not only one network formulation and one uh, related solver, but two, one related to the simplified model and one related to the detailed one. After that, as you would normally do on hydropower models, you pass your parameters in your data to create the multi state stochastic problem and you are able to uh, train your policy. After you train a policy, you can simulate it for uh, different scenarios and see how it performs. Now let's see the results of a previously described um, case. Here we have a cost comparison table. From the cost we expected to have using our simplified planning model and what actually happens in real life using the detailed model. So we see here that more, on more simplistic relaxations and approximations such as the network flow approximation and the DC approximation, we end up having significant gaps of 17% and 10%. More sophisticated approximations and relaxations such as the uh, SOC relaxation and the DCLL approximation we have no gap or insignificant gap. Here we can see on a solid line what we predicted to happen uh, using our simplified models and what actually happens uh, on the dotted lines. You can see here that on the simpli more simplistic models such as the network flow approximation and DC approximation, we expected to use less um, thermal generation, but we end up having to use uh, much, much more. Uh, Another impact is having spikes on energy price. And you see they are responsible for the, the gap we saw in the previous um, table. And also they pass uh, confusing and misleading signals to the engines of the grid. A more extensive study of time consistency due to network simplifications can be found on my uh, master's thesis, which uses hydropower models. A detailed documentation about installation, usage, and testing of the package can be found on the documentation page of GitHub of Hydropower Models. Thank you.